Before I continue the video, I just want to give you an update on Double A Amazing. In the beginning, he said that if you spoke Hebrew, you would never say that Moses had horns. But now he has retracted his statement, obviously, and is now saying that, yes, indeed, the word is horns. Case closed already. But for educational purposes, let's continue the education of the ancient moon god, which is the same god that the Illuminati worships to this very day. And of course, this is the ancient Egyptian fertility pole, which is why it is in the symbol of the penis of the bull, not in the form or shape of a human penis, because it represents the fertility of the ancient bull god, like Ptah, or Osiris, or Min, etc. The Egyptian obelisk actually has its roots in much more ancient worship of the sacred tree. And today we know these as maypoles, thus the fertility of the sacred tree. So this is why we see the worship of the sacred tree from ancient Egypt to Mesopotamia. And we see the same fertility symbolism in the pillar or the obelisk, which is a monolith. And thus the mon means the moon. Like the black monolith in 2001, A Space Odyssey, where the black monolith came and gave wisdom to the monkeys, thus the symbolism of giving wisdom to mankind, which is why they keep showing you the theme of the sun and the moon. Thus the monolith is an obelisk, Ba'el. Of course, Ba'el required burnt offerings exactly like the bull god of the Bible. And of course, Ba'el was annually, ritualistically, sacrificed. So Ba'el was the son or offspring of the father god El, the Most High. And thus Ba'el became the god. He was an obelisk. He was known as the sun god and, of course, a storm god. Exactly like the son of god Saturn, Zeus, the storm god, which is exactly like Jesus, or Jesus, the storm god. Thus, the son of god who takes over and is worshipped over the father god. So you'll notice that the story of the golden calf of the Israelites, they were worshipping a calf, which is the son of, the baby, the child. It represents the golden sun. And silver represents the moon. And remember, I told you that the moon is the parent of the sun. It gives birth to the golden sun. The moon is always and always will be first. This is why Monday, or Moon's Day, begins our week. It is day number one. So this is why Yahweh does not want the Israelites to worship the golden calf, which is the representation of the offspring, the child, because Baal is a jealous god and wants the worship for himself. You'll notice the water next to the phallic obelisk, thus the representation of intercourse, which is why they shoot the fireworks or the orgasm in the air. Notice that our Washington Monument is called a monument. It's called a monument because it is remorsing those that have died, that are dead. So the moon represents the darkness, the abyss, the death, the symbolic death of wintertime or nighttime. This is why the deity of the moon is demonized, which is why we have a devil and, of course, a monster. So it's always just about the sun and the moon, the day and the night, the winter and the summer, the two bi-seasons that fight one another, which is why in the Bible we have Jesus versus Satan. In cartoons we have the evil red miser of summer versus the evil miser of winter that fight and battle one another. We used to have what was known as Baal who versus Yam. Notice the Yah for the moon. 
So the Washington Monument is a monument, thus the moon men, which is the monument of the moon, exactly like the minotaur. Now, when they tip a pyramid with a golden tip, it's representing the golden sun. And when they tip a pyramid with silver or aluminum, like they did on the capstone of the Washington Monument, that represents the moon. In fact, this is why we have gold coins and silver coins that represent the sun and the moon. And of course, the U.S. mint produces them, the bullion gold and silver coins. So anyway, it's funny to hear Aaron say comments like, do you think they were actually wearing bull horns? It's a metaphor. And yes, it is a symbolic metaphor, but you do have to understand that I have absolute proof that the ancient Sumerians, the ancient Hebrews, their chiefs and their high priests and their gods all wore the sacred bullhorns. So the bullhorns that are worn upon the crown or the helmet are the symbol of strength and power. And the one with the most strength and power is the bull god. So as the names change throughout history, the lunar crescent symbol of the bullhorns of the moon never changes because it all represents the same symbolism. In fact, you can see the ancient Jewish high priest with the lunar bullhorns upon his crown. So perhaps now you will understand why the Bible says Jesus has a crown of thorns, which are really just the horns. So Jesus is representing the ancient horn god, and I even prove this when you look at the shroud of Torin. Look at the top of his head. You'll see the horns coming out, the ancient horn god. In fact, they are bull horns, which is why it's called the Shroud of Torin. Go look at the city of Torin, and you'll notice their symbol is the symbol of sin, the bull, the Taurus bull. Take notice how the Bible represents sin as the calf. Notice how the Bible says that Yahweh is the Most High. He is the one that is worshipped above all the other Elohim or gods. That's exactly what the Ugaritic text says about Baal. He is the Most High. And it was written thousands of years before the Bible. So the Most High Priest wears the sacred lunar bullhorns of the bull, and thus his ancient ancestors from Sumeria and Mesopotamia also wear the bullhorns. And this is exactly why they place the bullhorns upon their altars. So earlier I was telling you about the shin or the sin, the Hebrew letter of S, thus representing the thorn or the horn, which is closely associated with the Samech. So the Samech can represent a circle like the Ouroboros. When we look at the Shin, the Shin, or the Sin, or the Samech, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the ancient Egyptian Jed. And of course, the ancient Egyptian Jed is the symbol of the bull, the sacrum of a bull spine. When you look up the Samech in the Encyclopedia Judaica, you'll see that it says that it represents a bow, because the bow represents the moon the arc or the arch or the crescent of the bow, which is why the moon goddess Diana shoots her bow and her light rays or the arrows. So the ancient fertility of the moon god Men of Egypt can be seen in the Jewish menorah. Notice the moon and the sun. So Men 
was combined with Ra. The sun and the moon was combined with Amun. And we see this from the child who is born from the bull gods, Isis and Osiris, who is Horus. Horus actually represents both the sun and the moon, which is why Set poked out the left eye of Horus. The Egyptians made what was known as a moon pillar, the Thoth moon pillar, thus the Egyptian god of wisdom, Thoth, who gives us our thoughts. And the men of the moon gives us our word mind, which controls our mental aspects, such as lunacy. Even today, the moon is related to wisdom, which is why we have the wise old owl. Of course, owls come out at night when the moon is out. So, if you had gnosis or knowledge, then you would be knowledgeable, and you would know where the edge of the ledge is. And you would know that the owl sits in the tree of knowledge. When we take a look in the midst of the garden, in the sacred Kabbalistic tree of life, we find the eleventh Sifero, the El even of Daeth, thus knowledge, which is the forbidden fruit in the sacred garden of Eden. Adam and Eve now know good from evil, and they surely did not die from Daeth. Notice how Daeth is hidden in the midst of the tree, exactly like the serpent in Adam and Eve. So eating from the tree of life is demonized and portrayed to be evil. But the truth is, it's the consuming of the sacred knowledge. Thus, the apple that represents the fruit or the seed of life.